All right, this is the Veristic, Veristic Print Technology. It's our fingerprinting technology. Um, we have four components. One of them is to take a photograph of your finger and convert that into a format that is expected by the Department of Health. Well, what, I wish I could have my images. There's a finger, but you've also seen what a scan is. <coughs> So the one technology takes a photograph of your finger. The one technology takes a photograph of your finger and converts it into what you expect to come out of a fingerprint scanner. Right, so Veristic print consists of four units. One captures a fingerprint and converts it into what you get out of a scanner. So you can use standard third party tools with it. We've also got a homegrown feature extractor that you can use to extract minutiae and then use with standard matching algorithms. Then in addition, we have this hashing technology where we can take a fingerprint template, combine it with a password into a unit that you can't reverse, but you can still match. I'll explain as we go along. Right, here are the modules. The contactless acquisition module is the one that takes the photograph and converts it into a scan. We have the feature extraction, which is a minutia extractor, and we have our hasher. All right, contactless acquisition. There's a big difference between a photograph of a finger and what we typically expect to see in the scan. If you took that photograph and you sent it to Home Affairs for matching, it wouldn't match. But if you sent that to Home Affairs for matching, it would match. So the one technology is to take on a camera, camera, for example, your fingerprint and convert it to a form that is standard. There are two things we have to worry about. One is convert, making it look like that, which I call simulation. And the other one is the fact that when you use a fingerprint scanner, your finger is actually touching the scanner. There's no distance between you and, and, the, and the camera. Whereas when you're using a camera, there's a scaling problem. You might be far away and you might be close. And we solved that as well. We use that same technology to track infants. So we can take an infant's fingerprint and have it in a form that when they're an adult, it will match. Our feature extractor is just a homegrown um, minutia extractor. Takes a uh, fingerprint scan and produces an ISO standard. Uh, template that standard matching algorithms will work with. All right, here's our hasher. Our hasher takes, all right, if you, if you lost your fingerprint, if, if you are storing fingerprints in a database, even if they're the template, the mathematical template, if that gets stolen, it's far worse than stealing your password because I've stolen it for life. I can use that over and over again to, to, to simulate you. You can't change your finger once you've, you've done it. So what we do here is we take the standard ISO template plus the password and we combine it into a unit that we call the hash. Right? From the hash, if the password is strong, you'll never be able to recover either the password or the original template. Um, it's just, just this mash of numbers. All right, and then, then we have the matcher, which takes two hashes and gives you a biometric score as to how well they match. If they originate from the wrong password, they'll never match. You'll get a score of zero. If they come from the same password, then the matching will be a biometric match. The higher the score, the more likely you are to match. Advantages. So contactless acquisition, you don't have to touch any devices. So we're thinking COVID-19 and ambulance personnel doesn't have to actually touch the person who's hurt. They can take the photograph. Um, mobile applications with scanners. Um, our system interacts with standard systems. So if you use the first module, 
and you take the finger and you produce the scan, you can send that to Home Affairs for matching. If you use, a, you can then also take that scan and use any third party extractor or our extractor. And then the advantages for security is poppy. Um, you don't, if possible, you don't want to store another person's fingerprint because if you lose it, you've lost significant poppy data. So it's better to store the hash that if stolen, you can't reverse the password or the fingerprint. We have various deployment models. We have software as a service, so you can set it up using RESTful services on a server. We also have SDKs that you can use yourself, and we have them for Linux, Windows, and Android so far. All right, so there's various scenarios where health person, health personnel doesn't want to interact with the person, doesn't want to touch the person for fear of disease. We can use it to take their fingerprint and send it to Home Affairs for matching. For our hashes, a bank wants to increase their security. They want to demand that you give your fingerprint and a password, but they don't want to take responsibility for storing that password, for storing that fingerprint. So they can use our technology here. And the third one is where users wish to, to, to use their fingerprints to authenticate, but they don't wish to transmit them or have them stored on your site. And some pictures. That's a talk. <laughs> right, so contactless, contactless fingerprint homegrown minutia extractor, and then this hashing technology. That's what we have developed here. Any questions? Um, how do you think this technology can help to minimize human trafficking? Or the problem that we have lately of <clears throat> um, people just disappearing, uh, or people um, hostage scenarios. I, I don't think there's any special trick here. So I don't think this will help specifically in that scenario. This can only help where you already have fingerprints stored. Let's say when you drive into a complex, they want to take your fingerprint when you go in, and want, when you go out. You could use... If that information was stolen, you've stolen people's fingerprints. It's a poppy problem. So those are the kinds of scenarios that it's, it's where you're already using a fingerprint for authentication and we want to add security to it. In terms of uh, uh, camera resolution, I mean, I've been with guys that, you know, that their fingers, especially smokers, yeah, you know, yeah, f f from a picture perspective, especially the Dhaka ones, you know, so <laughs> how, how do you resolve that problem? It's not a problem because the finger has a, a patch there every time. So it's, a, it's, it's the same fingerprint. So, but, but do you have a special camera? No. Can I do it on my cell phone? You can do and it, as long as you've got 500 DPR. Okay, 500 so, DPR. So we plus. use 500 up and okay. it works. Okay, thanks. Great. That's what I want to know. Thanks. Uh, I, uh, thank you for the nice presentation. I, uh, fortunate enough, I I have a bit of a clue of what you are talking about. Just out of interest, uh, you mentioned that uh, if you take a picture, it's different than when you actually use the scan. I wanted to find out on the previous slide that um, isn't it like dependent on the outlaws are you? We, we, like, we, 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 we've solved that. You, you so solved I can't it. tell you how we've done it, but we've, we've solved it. Uh, okay. And we use the same technology to take a fingerprint of a child 
and yeah. it will always be the same size as when they're an adult. Ah, uh, okay. So, in so where is this work, like deployed at currently, or is it the CSR or we, banks? We or? we have it deployed at the CSRR, and we um, have a few SME SMMEs who are doing financial transactions. So they they um, in each supermarket or or or, or spaza shop, there's a they've got a cell phone. Okay. The, the 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 owner. And when you come in to buy or sell, they just scan your finger. Now, the reason I ask is because I had wanted to link it to, you know, we have a, a DNA backlog uh, there by SEPS. So I would wanted to find out if this system can somehow, you know, uh, work uh, Aren't sales. we already putting in a system for you? Sorry? I think we are already working with SEPS. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, it's correctional services. So we're working with correctional services and we're working with who are those people next to the. Ne next to the shopping center. We're putting in the system there. Okay, we'll take a final question or two <laughs> whilst he thinks about the shopping center. <laughs> I. If there's no other questions, and I think, uh, is that a question? Okay, okay, so just one last one. Thank you guys for your patience. We appreciate that it's uh, well past lunchtime. Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, uh, the, the algorithm, does it guarantee uniqueness? Like, you know, no two fingerprints will be the same. No, no, it, it, it's biometric. So <clears throat> we, we have an EER rate and so on. So if you and I had the same password and we were comparing our hashes, we would probably not match because we're different people, but one in a thousand people are going to match um, because of the EER rate on any biometric system. Okay. Does that mean? Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, are, are there potential, I mean, they, it, is that an acceptable rate? Because that, that could cause issues depending on the application, right? Well, one in a thousand is about the highest you get nowadays. We, 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 we had about one in a hundred, E rate of one in a hundred. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So I think with that, uh, we can give Dr. Baba a round of applause. Um...